In this video, we're going to look at single and double brackets involving thirds. Let's start off with single brackets. I'm going to go back to an example in algebra. So let's go for 2 multiplied by the quantity x plus 3. If we were asked to multiply this out or expand it, we would multiply the 2 by the x and the 2 by the 3. That would give me now 2x. We've got an addition sign, so it would be plus 6. So all I've done is expanded the brackets, or multiplied out the brackets. We can do exactly the same where thirds are involved. The only difference is that we might have to simplify our answer further using the laws of thirds. Let's have a look at some examples of where we have single brackets. We're asked to simplify the following. If this was an exam, it might say multiply out and simplify your answer. So on the first one, we've got the root of 2 multiplied by the quantity 3 plus the root of 2. So I'm going to multiply the root of 2 by 3 and the root of 2 by the root of 2. I'm going to write this now instead of root 2 times by 3. I'm just going to write it as 3 root 2. That gives us a cleaner notation and something more like uh, what we would see in a textbook. Depending on how many marks you're offered for this, what I'm going to do is just show that I'm going to multiply the root 2 by the root 2. We've seen that this gives us now 2. Root a multiplied by root a gives us a. So we can write this now as 3 root 2 plus 2. So I've expanded and simplified. Multiplied out the brackets and I've used the laws of thirds here to simplify root 2 times by root 2, which gives us 2. If you're unfamiliar with this property, go back and check the videos prior to this as we've looked at this one. Okay, I've now got the root of 3 multiplied by the quantity 4 minus root 12. It's entirely up to me if I want to simplify this first or simply multiply out and tidy up. I'm going to multiply out and then tidy up. So I'm multiplying the root 3 by 4, which is going to give me 4 lots of root 3. And then I'm going to have minus. I've got the minus in between these. I've got now the root of 3 multiplied by the root of 12. So this is going to give me now 4 root 3. And I'm going to show this one step by step. Minus now the root of 3 times 12. If we have the root of a multiplied by the root of b, it becomes the root of a times b. So this is the root of 36. We know that the square root of 36 is going to give us 6, so we can write this now as 4 root 3 minus 6. So I've expanded the brackets, or multiplied them out, and simplified. Here we've got the root of p multiplied by the quantity 4 minus 3 lots of the root of p. So 4 times by root p is going to give me 4 root p. I'm simply going to leave it like so. We've got the root of p multiplied by the root of p multiplied by 3. And again, we're subtracting that as we have a minus sign. So it's minus 3 lots of the root of p multiplied now by the root of p. So that's going to give us 4 the root of p minus 3 lots of p. Root p times by root p is, uh, is just p, so that's minus 3p. Okay, this one right here. We've got a bit of an issue here. What we've got here is p cubed. I'm simply going to use the property of root of a times by the root of b is the root of a times b and simplify this. So if we do 2 root p times by 1, that just gives us the 2 root p. 2 times by 3 is going to give us 6. So I'm going to put plus 6. Here, I've shown this like so. I'm not going to do it on this one, as we're fairly comfortable with that. All I'm going to have now is p times by p to the power of 3. So I can write this now as 2 root p, and then we're going to have plus 6. Now, this is p to the fourth, and if you want to write another line, what you can do, if you want to, you can write this as, as the square root of p to the fourth. So we can write this as 2 root p, and then we're going to have plus 6p squared. Just consider now what we've got here is the root of p to the fourth. We can write that as p squared, as we've seen in previous videos. 
So depending on how many marks you're given for this question, it's entirely up to you on how you want to do that bit right there. If you really wanted, what you could have done is written this as root p times by root p times by root p times by the root of p. That again was looked at in a previous video. Okay, with this one here, we've got a few choices. We can multiply it straight out and tidy up. We could also look at now splitting these up and rewriting them, or we could look at common factors and taking the common factor out. If I simply multiply out, what I'm going to have is the root of three multiplied by the root of six. So if I show this one step by step, the root of three multiplied now by the root of six minus the root of three multiplied by the root of 27. So all I'm doing is simply now expanding this and not doing any particular simplification. When I say simplification, this can be written as the root of three times by the root of two. So if I have that, we could write this as two root three. Root three times by root three is three times by root two would give us three root two. This one I could have written as three root three, which would have made that simpler. We'll go this way though. That's going to give me the root of 18 minus the root of 81. The root of 81 is 9. All we need to do is deal with this. If we go back to our work previously, what we would have seen is that this is going to be 9 times by 2, which we could have written as the root of 9 times by the root of 2, which is going to give us 3 root 2. If you want to show that working, again, depending on how many marks you're offered, you might want to do that. So this one is 3 root 2, and that one is going to be 9. So that's our final answer, but we could have done that a whole host of different ways. You could have even taken the root of 3 out as a common factor. If you wanted to do that and be a little uh, more bold or bolder, what we could have done is written this as a root of 3, and then we've got now the root of 3 times by the root of 2 minus the root of 3 times by 3. So let's just write that as 3 root 3. So if we took out now the root 3, we'd have the root of 3 multiplied by the root of 3, and then inside the brackets what's left, I'll just put square brackets, we'd have root 2 then minus 3. So that's going to give me 3. So we've got 3 lots of a root of 2 minus 3. And that gives me 3 root 2 minus 9. And if we look at what we had just here. Uh, where are we? 3 root 2 minus 9. Alternatively, if you wanted, you could write this one as 3 root 3 and simply multiply through. So a few different approaches. Entirely up to you on how you want to, to do that. We need to be fairly competent at this because when we come to rationalising the denominator of a fraction, we will at some point have to expand out um, in the numerator when we've multiplied a fraction by a particular value. In a later video, we will look at rationalising the denominator. Okay, so they're single brackets. What we're going to do now is move on to double brackets. So these are examples of double brackets. Again, using an example in algebra, Let's say we have now x plus 2 multiplied now by x minus 3. If we were asked to expand this out and collect like terms or expand and simplify, we would now multiply out. There are a few different ways to do this. I've seen the claw. I've seen a grid. Entirely up to x times by x gives me x squared. If you've heard of FOIL, first outer in a last, you can do that. x times by 3 is 3x, and we're going to subtract that. Then we've got x times by 2, and we're going to add that, so that's plus 2x. And then we've got 2 times 3, which is 6. We've got a positive and a negative, so that's going to be now minus 6. Tidying up x squared minus 1 lot of x minus 6. So all I've done is expanded and simplified. Again, we use exactly the same technique with thirds, but we simplify where required using the laws of thirds that we've looked at in the previous videos. So let's go ahead. So if we multiply this out, I'm going to have 1 times by root 3. Now, it depends on how much um, 
work you're expected to show. If you're doing this and you want to sort of show your teacher you know exactly what you're doing, you can show them step by step and tidy up. And then we'll have 1 times by 4. Then we'll have now plus the root 3 times by the root 3. And then we'll have now the root 3 times by the 4. So all I've done is simply use FOIL or any method that you like. I've done the 1 times by the root 3. I've done now the 1 times by the 4. I've done the root 3 times by the root 3 and also the root 3 times by the 4. So if we tidy this up, what we've got here now is the following. This is going to give me root 3 plus 4. Now, we know that root a times by root a is a, so that's going to give me plus 3. And then we've got plus 4 lots of root 3. Don't fall into a trap of thinking that's the root of 12. It's just 4 lots of the root of 3. So tidying up, collecting like terms, root 3 and 4 root 3, that gives me 5 root 3. And then I've got now the 7 here. So all I've done is expanded and simplified. We've multiplied out and tidied up. Okay, let's look at this next one. This is uh, gives rise to something quite interesting. If I have x plus 5 and then x minus 5, this will multiply out to give us what we call the difference of two squares. So what we have then is x squared. We have minus 5x. We have plus 5x. And then we have minus 25. What we can see is that these two middle terms drop out. The expression is independent of terms in x, and we have x squared minus 25. This right here is a square number, this is a square number, and that is a minus, and we call this the difference of squares. We're going to use this technique when we rationalise the denominator by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by what we call the conjugate. The conjugate is simply now the same values but with the sign changed. We'll save that for another video but I think it's important just to introduce that we will be needing this at some point. So let's look at this one then. This is going to give us now a difference of squares. So if I do 4 times by 4, 4 times by 4 and again I'll show full workings because usually in an exam if you're given something like this you'll be given a free marks for doing it and two of the marks will be for working. So then what we're going to have is minus, and we're going to have the 4 times by the root 7. Then we're going to have plus 4 times by the root 7. And then finally, what we're going to have now is the root 7 multiplied by the root 7, and we're going to be subtracting that. The signs are different, therefore the answer will be negative. Positive times by... Uh, uh, positive times by a negative will give us a negative. So that's what we end up with. So if we look at this, these middle terms are going to drop out. Minus 4 root 7 plus 4 root 7. So it just leaves me 16 here, 4 times 4. And then we've got now minus root 7 times by root 7, which is going to give me 7. 16 minus 7 is 9. So all of that now has just given us 9. If we did that on a calculator... 4 plus the root of 7, and then we did 4 minus the root of 7, so 4 minus the root of 7. This will simply give us now the 9 we were expecting. If you want to look at it um, as straight off, it's simply this number squared minus this number squared. So it's going to be 16 minus 7, and that will give us our answer. So that's the difference of squares. Okay, let's look at this next one. With this one now, what we've got is the, uh, 2 minus the root of 5 multiplied by 1 minus root 10. This here, you might want to write as a root of 5 times by root of 10. I'm not going to, because all we're going to do is multiply it out. But we will need to simplify one of our terms at the end to give it in its lowest form. 2 times by 1 is 2, so I'm just going to write this one out. So 2 times by 1, then we can have minus 2 root 10, minus root 5, so minus root 5, and then we're going to have plus, so plus the root of 50. These are not like terms. 
when we looked at adding and subtracting like terms, we saw that if we could either have the thirds as like thirds or manipulate them, then we could do it. The only thing that I can do right here is just tidy this up very slightly. The root of 50, as we've seen in previous videos, is the root of 25 times by the root of 2, or 5 root 2. So in its simplest form, this would be 2 minus 2 root 10, minus root 5, and then we're going to have plus, now on here, 5 root 2. It's messy, that is what we get though. So these aren't always going to turn out absolutely perfect. So that one looks really nice and pretty. This is just a collection now of, now we've got an integer, we've got a root 10, we've got a root five, and then a root two in there. Okay, let's do this one. So we've got five times by four, or four times by five, 20. Then we're gonna have minus 12 root P, so minus 12 lots of the root of P. Then we're going to have minus five lots of the root of P. And then we're going to have the negative and negative will give me plus. So this is going to be plus three. Again, check how many marks it's worth and the mark scheme of whether they want you to show this is root P times by root P, or you can simply write down that it's going to be P. We can do a little tied in with this. So what we're going to have is 20. We're going to have now minus 12 root P minus 5 root p is minus 17 root p and then we're going to have plus 3p root p and p are not like terms you can't combine those or add them as such that is in its simplest form okay this one right here a plus root b a minus root b again this is going to give us a difference of squares what we saw ultimately is that it was this squared minus this squared. So 16 minus 7 gave us 9. So this one should give us now a squared minus b. What we'll do is just go ahead, expand that out and show that that is the case. a times by a is a squared. Then we're going to have minus a multiplied by the root of b plus a multiplied by the root of b and then we're going to have minus now we've got a positive and a negative and that's going to be now and you might need to show this root b times by root b i'm just going to write it like so these two terms cancel and we're left with a squared minus b remember if we have a root b so let's just write this here a root b this now is the same as saying root b a in the same way if we have three times by 2, this is the same as saying 2 times by 3. It's simply written in a different form. Okay, so let's look at this one right here. What we've got here is root a plus root b, root a minus root b, and then we've got an a on the outside. So a bit of extension work here, but it shouldn't be any major hassle. So what we would expect, again, if we had to show four workings, I would do, I'm expecting that it will be root a times by root a, which will be a, then root b times by root b, which will give me now b. So we could write it now as a times by a, which is a squared, minus a b. So that would be our final answer. If you want to show that, if we just expand the double bracket first and leave now the a on the outside, root a times by root a is a, then we'll have minus, and we can write this as root a, b. Remember, the root of a times by root of b is the root of a, b. Then plus the root a, b, or b, a, it really doesn't matter, minus b. Root b times by root b is b. We know that these two terms are going to cancel with the difference of squares. Even if you've got a, b and b, a, they are now the same. So all we end up with on this one now is a minus b in the bracket, and we're back to where we are here. So, there we go, multiplying out single and double brackets where thirds are involved.